Yesterday we looked at testing a DC to DC converter with a constant load and a constant supply voltage, but what happens if those change? That's what we're exploring today and then we'll draw today's wave winners. Today we're exploring how to test a DC to DC converter. We're gonna use a 60 watt, 24 volt to 12 volt DC converter that Bill brought along, but you can use these tests on just about any converter out there. We're gonna stress the converter in two ways. First, we're gonna do a line regulation test, which means we're gonna vary the input power and see how it affects the output. Second, we're gonna do a load regulation test. For this test, we'll vary the load on the converter's outputs and see how the output power changes. To do that, Bill brought along a power analyzer, which is essentially a fancy DC power supply system with a chassis that you can load modules into. This one has a 100 watt supply module that will supply power to the converter's outputs and a 100 watt electronic load module, which we'll use to sync power from the converter's outputs. To control it all, we'll use the new advanced power control and analysis software, which is part of the Pathwave Benchview platform. This makes it easier for us to control the supply and load dynamically. This converter has two sets of inputs and two sets of outputs, so we can do four wire sensing. One set carries the power and the other set allows the system to read back the values and adjust its outputs. For our first test, line regulation, the power supply will output a series of different power levels using an output list. We're then measuring the converter's output to see how it changes. So Bill, tell us a little bit about the converter and the test that we're about to run. This is an automotive converter. It's made to take 24 volts and convert it to 12 volts. And it's uh, mostly used in like large trucks or large tractors, the 24 volt system. So we're, we're simulating some part of turning on a car? We're gonna use list mode to simulate a battery. The battery starts at 24 volts when the car first starts, turns on, and we'll have it there for two seconds just so it stabilizes. And as we turn the starter motor over, we're gonna see that voltage drop. And so we're gonna simulate that down to 20 volts. Once the engine started, we'll have the voltage jump up to 30 volts, and then it'll finally settle out at 28 volts for the remainder of the test. Okay, so essentially, you know, you put the key in, it idles at 24 volts, you crank it, the load on the battery increases, so the voltage drops. As soon as that load is released, the voltage springs back up and settles, and we're gonna watch and see how our converter handles that change in line voltage. Correct. Okay, so let's, get, let's do it. So we have a couple different signals here. The green is the input voltage and the blue is the output voltage. Correct. Can you talk us through those little spikes in the output voltage? Absolutely. So the very first one is actually caused by the current turning on. The current starts off with zero and when it jumps to three amps, we see our first um, change in the output. The second change in the output is due to the input voltage changing. That's when we went from the 24 volts down to 20. And finally, our biggest change of all occurs when we go from the 20 volt input to the 30 volts and you can see there's a there's a pretty big swing in our output voltage at that point and then finally there's a, a tiny swing after that as the voltage drops from 30 volts down to 28 volts and our very last change is due to our current source turning off and our voltage is at five volts per division so we can see that and we know what those values are and if you look at v3 which is our output voltage we're at 50 millivolts of division so we're only seeing like you know less than 200 millivolts of difference in the output based on those dramatic swings on the input. So overall, it's safe to say our converter performed really, really well there, uh, even better than some of our early tests, which is probably based on the amperage limit we were pulling. But list mode here is really useful for testing our converter. Correct. One of the big things we took advantage of was being able to set in unique currents for each step. So when we were at the start off at 24 volts, we set a two amp limit, which is about 50 watts. And when we drop down to 20 volts, we we're able to increase that limit to two and a half amps. So that was a unique capability that list mode provides. So speaking of different currents, our second test is actually load regulation. And we have loaded an arbitrary waveform into the electronic load. So the electronic load will force the current coming out of the converter to vary. The question is, how well does our converter handle these load changes? So for this test, we're gonna use a fixed voltage and vary the current. So Bill, what steps are we looking at with our ARP? So we wanna really create a big step to see what happens. So we're gonna start with uh, zero amps, then we're gonna pull four amps immediately, and then we're gonna back it off to two amps, then three amps, and then one amp, and we'll see how it affects the output voltage. So Bill, talk us through what we're seeing here. So the middle, the top line is our 24 volts, so it's static this in this test, and we only vary the current, which is shown on the bottom trace. And you can see that big jump from zero amps to four amps, 
and you can tell the output dropped a little bit, but only about 100 millivolts. And then the voltage recovered as we backed off on the current. So basically it changes a little bit with each amperage step, but overall it's again doing really, really well. Yeah, it's quite a, impressive. The last thing to do once you have this set up is to run it for a long time. Ideally, you don't want to sit and watch it for three hours or six hours. So you can use data logging, which lets you set it, walk away, and come back later and see how it performs. And Bill, you were telling me there's some really nice data logging capabilities built into this. Correct. One of the neat things they've added to the software is the ability to just save a segment of the data. And I think we've all faced that task where we had to look through just a ton of data to find a certain event. Well, now you can actually go in and set your markers around that event and just save that data from that event. And this power analyzer also has a scope capability, so you can trigger and zoom in on short events like an edge and peek into your system without actually having to pull out a separate scope. Another thing you can do with this setup is level trigger and have it do something when the trigger occurs. One of the most common things is actually have the outputs turn off based on the level trigger. And this could really save things if your test goes south, something shorts out, and your current spikes, you can just shut everything down. Another thing is helpful to do is instead of just setting the output to zero volts, we can now, as the voltage is headed to zero, we can actually just turn off the output. So overall, our DC to DC converter did really well. We looked at the line regulation and the load regulation, and dang, I, I might have to go pick up one myself. Or your 20 volt. For my 24 volt, volt car, car, yeah, yeah. Good. You can run a dual battery tray, and yeah. yeah. To learn more about power supplies, check out the resource library over on the Wave page. Those power analyzers are a hit with everyone who uses one, and you could actually win that setup in today's drawing. Today and tomorrow, one winner will get their choice of any of these pieces of test gear. Five people will win a U1282A 4.5 digit DMM, and five people will win a DSOX 1204G. That's 11 winners today, tomorrow, and Friday. Today's winners of the U1282A are Tyrone Mix, Matthias Horman, Ewan Morvan, Andrew Bullpit, and Matt Waltz. Congratulations, we'll be in touch with you shortly. And the winners of the DSOX 1204G are Frank Hundraiser, Hardeep Singh, James Rooney, Stefan Schrommel, and Mark Tocheri. And the winner of the Tier 2 prize is Rakesh K. Congrats to all of our winners. We'll be in touch with you shortly. There are now only two days left, 22 prizes to go, so make sure to tune in and go to wavekeysight.com for your chance to win. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff, and I'll see you right back here tomorrow. There's got to be a joke here, right? I don't know. They'll tell us in the comments. I could do this for days.